do you live here? Do you live here? Are you, do you live here alone? You, you have no roommates. You live here by yourself. Yeah. 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 Insane, right? That's crazy. Then we What's go through the whole thing. What's your favorite thing about? Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite thing about the house? Yeah, I think yeah, my yeah. favorite thing about the house, mm -hmm. um, the toilet. Oh yeah. Yeah. I get a lot of use out of that. Oh Can I tell yeah. Because I I do be shitting. High value buy. What you got there? <laughs> high value buy? What? No high value purchase. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was. I thought you were talking about like a high value bisexual. bisexual? Yeah, you've been uh, you've been doing this pod for too long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the and, bisexual discourse is seeped going, into your brain. What are you going and describe a low value bisexual? Uh, you're looking at her. Welcome to Two Nosy Meerkats. Welcome everyone. to Two Nosy Meerkats. Today it is just us. We're it's just us, baby. It's just mom and dad gabbing away. Gabbing away with you. Smooching. We're sitting alone. Olivia's yes. not here. Yes. We are alone in a room together. I know. Who's who knows what's gonna happen? Yeah. Get that restraining order ready. Yoink. Yoink. Oh. It's nice. We haven't been alone together in a while. We should we should get intimate. <gasps> Let's get intimate. How has you? your life been? Oh no, you rock paper scissors. <laughs> On, on lives? <laughs> on lives. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Rock, okay. rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, scissors shoot. shoot. Oh. Fuck. Boom. My life's going like that. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just kidding. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I think S so. Situationships or, or serious things on the horizon? Situationships good. Uh, no, nothing is here. Oh, it's me. I'm a, I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. I'm a, I'm a dog. <laughs> woof, woof. Right? Kate, that's my, that's my yeah, whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> and and who let this dog out? <laughs> a Baja man? Yes. Just a one. I love all women and one Baja man. Yes? Yeah. Ah, uh, you're a true bi. Yes, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I found one of the Baja men I, today. Being bisexual means... Find we, one we of the just, Baja men. We just men. like women and the Baja men. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You got I'm doing wonderful. got s things on the horizon. I do actually. Well, I'll 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 like make like plugs at the end. But yeah, I got I got some fun stuff. On oh, I did I did just buy uh, tickets to go uh, to London for Christmas. Nice. So I'm gonna try to reach out to a few of my contacts to do some stand up while I'm there as well. Nice. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. Our friend Sarah Ruth Brown, I believe, is gonna be in London as well. Oh yes, she is. Yeah, yes. yeah. So I'm hopefully gonna hang out with her. Maybe try to do some shows to get yeah it's a yeah That'll fun stuff nice. on the horizon yeah i i've never been to london during christmas i really <gasps> want to go oh my god it's I've magical it's best. i have i told you like one of my favorite night in london that i've had in recent no. years one of my favorite nights that i've had was i went to uh the south bank i love just walking along the south bank of the thames and I was listening to Trevor Noah's audiobook, Born a Crime, and I was sipping on mold wine. It was snowy and cold, but I was bundled up and I was just walking and it was just... It I was, love that you were living your Christmas fantasy, but it wasn't like Mariah Carey. It was like, here's how apartheid is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just listening to a good book and sipping on a nice little yeah. drink. It was it's lovely. It's a beautiful book. It was great. It's a great book. It's a beautiful location. Beautiful. It was... Everything was nice. My mom loves Trevor Noah. She would leave her life for Trevor Noah, I think. Oh, <gasps> wait, yeah. who are also is okay, leave like just loves it but like attracted to him? I don't think so. I think that she genuinely is like I mean, I think that she could get there, <laughs> right? I think that if she if he was like Brenda, I need you right now, she mm -hmm. she could, but mainly she just I mean, she just loves him cuz he's a great Bre representative for South Africa. No disrespect to your mom or anyone else with the name Brenda. But the phrase, Brenda, I need you right now, <laughs> that is hilarious. You know, there's a lesbian dating app called Brenda, and now I can't use it. <laughs> is there actually? Yes. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> okay, wait. Is Okay, the real question. Is Lex a dating app? Or is it just like a resource, like an encyclopedia? I have it. <laughs> You log on, they're like, so what's new? you want to date women. <laughs> Here, so what's new and gay? <laughs> yeah, they just show you like photos of what's her face, Tate McRae, who I don't know who, who that is. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> I feel, this is the kind of shit I feel like you hearing about. Apparently it's gay 101, but I have no idea who that is. I, I, you, I, who is that? Who is that? Tate McRae? I, I don't know. I, like, she's someone who it's everyone. Look it up on Lex. 
<laughs> you go to Lex and it shows you who it is. What is Lex actually? It's a dating app. It's a dating app. Okay, I've never okay. been on it. I don't want to be. I don't want to be horrified. Wait, horrified? Lex. So basically, the lesbians way, are lovely people. What do you have it's against? It's not about them? lesbians. It's the way it works. Is that Lex is the app that like. So Hinge is like the like, oh, let's go on a date app. And Tinder is like the let's fuck app. Yeah. And then okay. Lex is and then Field is the like, let's really fuck app, but let's fuck weird. And then Lex is the app where it's like, do you have a problem with our society that you need to air out on a date? And if you do, go on Lex and find someone to get a coffee with. And just, just just talk about only that. So it's not about like it's not about like your sex being weird or your dating weird, but it's like what's your motive? It's it's it does your motive have a lot of explanation? Yes, it's like really intense people, okay. um, who like I don't know how to describe. I honestly haven't been on it because I'm afraid. But the okay. stories I hear, the dispatches, it's a lot of like. Uh, it's a lot of like that meme that's like a sock says you're weaponizing your neurotypical privilege to <laughs> sock. Wh- what do you know about sock? No. Okay. So there's a apart from the orthodox sock, this little guy. Oh, the sheet. The sheet. Foot. The sheet for my foot. Yeah. Yeah. There's. A- I think of it more as a, as a glove for my foot. I do have finger socks. Do you really? I do. Uh, well, I toe socks. I mean, finger <laughs> socks. <laughs> That is an actual glove. No, uh, no, I do. But I do have toe socks. I do. And toe shoes. That's crazy. I feel like my toes are too big. Really? Wait, wide or lo- what, what do you they're got? Wide. They're wide. Little, they're a little round. Yeah, you've seen my toes. You know that I have an opposite issue. You really do. I don't know how you, you've got like some, the, the shoes that you get must be custom made. Like, no. can you, can you get me no. toe socks that have... Ba- that there are basically for fingers <laughs> yeah but for my toes no it, it, that's actually easy because if they're fairly elastic yeah but like an issue i have it's not like finding shoes long enough it's shoes narrow enough mm. that's the thing is that my feet are very narrow interesting they're very very narrow feet you uh you can make a boat out of that a boat yeah out of out of your I don't know where i am today guys <laughs> oh, sorry a boat out of my shoes socks or feet feet because they're too, they're narrow and they can like be the wood on the boat <laughs> if you put like 10 of them together you can make your own canoe what the fuck? 10 of the same size <laughs> making a boat out of okay first off i'm cloning my feet yes i need to clone my feet you gotta clone your feet do I have to chop off a foot in order to clone it? Yeah. You never seen um in Into the Woods where they chop off part of the girl's foot so that uh Oh, so that it fits in the shoe? Yes. The evil stepsisters. Yes. Yeah. And then they just get nothing. They just have like shitty feet. <laughs> it's <laughs> they, just, amazing. they just have dog shit feet, like, oh, this is awkward. <laughs> you never finished the story of your favorite night on the table. <laughs> Oh no, that was it pretty much. It was just like me oh. listening to an audiobook, sipping on mulled wine and having a nice little stroll. That was it. Nothing nice. else happened. I do that's perfect. It was that. lovely. Yeah, I really want to go. My back. favorite day in London though. My favorite day ever was uh being high with Sharia Mattis. Oh, of course. Oh my god. Just like getting to be the ear that she told everything to. One, it was like hilarious, but it was also so saddening because I I thought I should have been prepared with some sort of recording device because she was dropping gold left, right, and center. The best. The best. And in London, too, I feel like people are talking in their accents, and it's just like oh my God, her she's, brain into a new realm. Everything is a premise. Everything. Oh, she's the best to be yeah. in London with. Yeah. I was in I was in London uh, for the longest I've ever been away from New York City. How I was long? There for, I was there for six weeks. Whoa. Well, actually, that's not true. I was How old in, were you? I was uh, 21. Okay. I was in Italy and Spain first with my sister, and then, but that was only for like a week, and then I okay. went to London for five weeks. Gotcha. Was, That's a good long time. It was definitely the longest I've ever been away from home, and it was crazy being a, because like I didn't expect, I think, to be homesick. Oh, yeah. And it's funny because a lot of our friends have this experience where hmm. they like move to a new city, right? And they're like, they're like not near their, 
I mean, I guess you're not near like your mom now, but like they're not near like anything where they grew up and there's just a certain level of like, I'm here, I'm doing it, I'm on my own. Yeah. But I never had that, but it kind of felt like I got a mini dose of it in London. Right. Wait, what was, were you just on like vacation? No, I was on study abroad. Study abroad. Okay. Yeah, it was right. a fun ass study abroad because we got to see a bunch of plays. That's the best. On the West End and then. Oh, there, theater yeah. in London, like not to be like, but theater in London is on another level. No, we went they to the really Globe. Are. It was incredible. Like yeah. we, we, um, we stood near the stage. Oh yeah, you were in the groundlings. The, those are the cheaper seats. Yep. But they're, they, they're not, honestly not the seats. best view. No, well, they're not, not seats. They're it's standing. not a seat. And you're not allowed to bring in a little fold out stool or anything. You can't do that. Yeah. It's apparently a fire hazard. You well, have to stand. Because you couldn't do it back in the 1700s. Yeah, but back 1700s. Wait, for for like Shakespeare time? He, what, when was Shakespeare happening? Like early 1600s. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> okay, Wikipedia. <laughs> okay, sure. I think Shakespeare is happening all around us right yeah. now. <laughs> he never really died. He's still with us in here. I think Shakespeare, they should bring him back in a hologram like yeah. they did with uh, Tupac. I hate Shakespeare. Really? Oh, I don't really hate Shakespeare, but I never really, I could never really dial into the language. Mm. I, it, I, it's something I always struggled with. I could never just like lose myself in it the way some people are just able to lose themselves in, in his text. Here's how I feel about Shakespeare. Think not that I love him, though I ask for him. That Tis, sounded like Shakespeare. Tis but a peevish boy. Okay. But he talks well. <laughs> <laughs> sounded like Shakespeare because it was Shakespeare. That was good. <laughs> was it actually Tis but a peevish boy? Yeah. Okay. All right. In in eighth grade at summer camp, I was Phoebe in As You'd Like It. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. Okay. I was a girl pining for a boy and I was dialed in. That's, oh my God. Yeah. Did you have to do a lot of research on what that's like? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what, celebrities straight. <laughs> hey, google.com, what is straight behavior? What is straight behavior? I'm doing it. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. I am, I'm the example. This, I'm the meter that everything Lucas, is measured by. I think you and me meet in the middle of the gender spectrum. <laughs> just a pure like somewhere right in between <laughs> so i think we might be the same gender ultimately <laughs> but neither of us are non-binary no we're just as we're fuck. as close as it can get without being non-binary <laughs> yes i think so that is yeah probably yeah people are like there's a lot of trans people in your circle i'm like yes i am almost them <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! <clears throat> uh, I'm still I'm still getting people trying to convince me otherwise. You're you're an egg, and they're not they're not convincing me. Yeah, it's egg just hasn't not been happening. cracked. No. Well, uh, speaking of eggs, it's not really speaking of eggs, but okay. should we talk about the Disneyland streaker? Yes, let's talk about the Disneyland streaker. Do we? Do you have like info about him? Didn't yes. He, he, oh, he went and it's a small world after all. Yes. Yes. He went on that ride. Olivia messaged us kind of the details and yes. I watched a couple of the TikToks. My takeaway from the TikToks was that this man jumped in mm -hmm. to the water in It's a Small World in his boxers mm -hmm. and was like running around in his boxers playing with all the things on the It's a Small World exhibit. Mm -hmm. But what I thought was so funny was a Disneyland attendant was like, can you please get off? <laughs> But no one was like appending him, like no one was like forcing him to leave. Pe yeah. They were just trying to reason with this person. What, it was did, did, you know what I so love about funny. that? That's what I would do. Of course it's what you would do. It's what anyone would do. But it What was, would you do? I would I would let him cook. Yeah. <laughs> I would, Be like, hey, go off, queen. He wasn't hurting anyone. He was just standing there. Nah, he's. I mean, it's a children's ride. You, you shouldn't have to see a naked man. I think that's a fair thing to say. You shouldn't have to see a naked man, but there are plenty of places. He to be wasn't naked. quite a man. He was like kind yeah. of a boy. And I feel like, OK, now it sounds like I'm defending pedophilia. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that, like, maybe it's less scary than seeing like a 40 year old man seeing this like weird little boy. Like he he was so weird looking that he looked like one of the it's a small world attractions. So it's like maybe he blend he blended in. Do you think that he went in it's a small world so he could he so he could be the biggest thing there? 
Maybe it was strategic. So now you support him is what you're saying. I'm not saying I support him, you but su- I, I but I re- but I support the hustle. You support him. You love I him. I respect the hustle. You th- yes, I do love him. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's this see. This guy. I, uh, he took an interesting route to it. Let's see the route. Okay. So basically, um, videos provided are above in the chat. Also, there is speculation he was tripping, like that he well, was. That's on that's so likely. Well, there were so times likely. he would just sit down, like while he was streaking, he would just sit. Yeah, he was hitting a peak of his high. <laughs> Honestly, he went on the ride, got off the boat, stripped down, started climbing around. Then he got in the water, all in his boxers. Then somehow made it to the exit. Meanwhile, he wasn't in a spot where Disney cast members could grab him safely, and the ride was mid operation, so they couldn't shut it down. It's not a ride that's easy to walk off. Mm-hmm. Once at the exit, he lost his boxers and jumped back in the water. Then he was carried out naked and hogtied. Hogtied. <laughs> Oh my god. What is hog tied again? I think it's like when you have all your limbs tied behind you. Aww. Or is it or is it in front? It could be it could be either. Sound off in the chat. That's um, so sweet. S- sweet? Yeah. I th- you think it's sweet to be hog tied? I think it's Oh, hello. Sorry, that was the that was him. Sorry, her, her phone got a little excited cuz I'm here. Well, I think it's that's true. When Lucas is not away, the oh, Gabby yeah. will play. I'm deeply erotic to phones and all technology. They they get horny when I'm around. You're like uh you're like Black Mirror. Yeah. Quarter Black Mirror. That's too good. <laughs> phones see Lucas. They're like, "What if a guy made me made my, made me wet?" <laughs> what if a random guy made me a piece of technology wet? wet. What if my motherboard Met with his father board. Too far. <laughs> All right. Enough. Uh, enough from me. Well, I don't. I don't know that I actually get sweet to be hogtied, but I think it's it's. <laughs> I th- I think that I like when I think about that was hog-tied, so brave of you to say. I confuse it with like pretzel tied. Like, I feel like pretzel tied. They tied up his his arms to his legs. Uh huh. In the back, and they carried him out like he was some kind of like donut like pastry okay like uh wait like wait how are you imagining it's sort I'm of imagining like, it like like this yoing yes yes and i think that that's nice the idea of them carrying this this guy who was tripping uh-huh. balls and this this the, carrying him to somewhere safe where he could do that while he was tied up like a little pretzel and people were like holding him i feel like that's how restorative justice should be I think if anyone does a crime, they should be gently hogtied like a pretzel and carried to somewhere safe. <laughs> yeah, you should have that. You totally should. <laughs> Wait, okay, okay. Let me let me ask you this. If you have to choose any public space in the world to be both high off your tits and naked, yeah, but you have to pick a public place for this to happen. Where do you choose? A public place. The Gowanus Canal? <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> what about you? That You're not going to stand out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be like a mutant by the end of it. It doesn't matter. Or just superpowers. You may you may just unlock superpowers. That's true. Like yeah. in uh, Kim Possible, that episode yeah. where... Um, they went into the Gowanus. <laughs> they go into the Gowanus Canal. And they're like, Whoa. for today's episode, we get through the Gowanus. <laughs> Near the Ikea where they clearly dump stuff. <laughs> like, I think that in that episode, they go to like Ron's old summer camp and there's like uh-huh. a poison lake where okay. if you swim too long, you'll uh-huh. become a mutant. And that's what one of the villains is. Okay. I do think that happens to you if you go into the Gowanus Canal. I see. Interesting. Okay. I would choose a nudist speech. <sighs> Snooze fest. Smart answer. He's a smart boy. I prepared that. <laughs> <laughs> you, On the he spot. Thought of, he thought about it all morning. I honestly, but the moment we came up, the moment you, you brought this up, I was like, oh, this is my question and this is my answer. Did you go well. to a nudist beach? Did I what? Sorry? Have you been to a nudist beach? Would you go? I have, when, but before I can remember. Mm. My dad took me to a nudist beach when I was a toddler, when I was like three. Interesting. When I was really little, I definitely used to think like 
I, I think I was somehow also in situations where like people, maybe I went to a nude speech too when I was little and it was, it was t- nudity is okay, but I feel like it was too young. Cause I feel mm. like dick and balls look so weird at that age from that angle. Yeah. They're like shriveled cause it's cold. Yeah. Not that, that I, not that I want to go to a news speech and have everyone be like rock hard, like, ew. But you know, just a little. Or if if it's cold, well, they would be very taut then instead of loose. Yeah. Do you prefer loose or taut <laughs> loose or scrotums? Taut. Scrotums. Yeah. Um, I would prefer scrotums stay in the house. Ah, where they belong. In the, yes, I want. Yeah. I want scrotums to go back up. Back up. Yeah. You know how like uh, queens will tuck. I want yeah. I want balls to be like that all the time. Oh my god, this actually reminded me of a video that I want to show you. There is a I'm guy, scared. I forget his name, but he has he is he's a porn performer, creator, and he can put his balls up his butt and then shit them out. His balls are long enough that he can and he's just talented enough. Are his palms spuddy, mom spaghetti? I wish. <laughs> then he could sweater. do it. Then he could do it all. But no, this guy. I'm. It's kicking me that I don't know his name. Uh, but he. I, I. There's a video of him like he like walks in screen, props up his leg, and then you. Then he. You. You get a look of of his gooch, and you're like, what's going on? And then you. Re, and then his like his balls just come out of his and asshole and then was swing Matt down. Rafe. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Dude, my balls are in my butt. Ha ha. <laughs> Bro, are you offended? Is that, that okay? My balls are in now my that butt? I know you guys are cool now. Yeah, now that I know it, it's a comedy show. Loosen up. Checking my balls are in my butt. to see if you guys are fun. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking to see if I can put my balls in my butt. The first joke. <laughs> That's how you know it's going to be good. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> pretty good it doesn't count if you're doing a black scent if you're also doing matt rife (laughs) (laughs) it's a loophole yeah it's the same thing about doing a jamaican accent but you're like no no no, this is chet hanks (laughs) yes no no no, i'm doing chet hanks right beloved son of tom i'm just impersonating a beloved son of tom yeah you know there's a third hanks son i mean there's colin hanks there's chet's jet chet hanks and then there's yeah there's another one who's like a child still i think Really? Yeah, Child yeah. Hanks. Child <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Child Hanks, yeah. Hi, <laughs> child, come over here. That's my impression of Tom. <laughs> child, yeah. it's time for dinner. Wait, do you remember ever like the worst name that of like a kid that you went to school with? I knew Or you're like, what what were you doing, parents? I knew that? a girl named Charisma and she wasn't very charismatic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. But she was nice. I really liked her. So I guess that's not that bad. It'll be hilarious naming a child nice. Yeah. I knew this girl nice. Hi, I'm nice. She, she was the- <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm nice. Well, I was thinking about the child named child. When that child becomes an adult, you have to be like, fuck me good, child. <laughs> fuck me good. Oh, Christ. You know, that wouldn't be good. So uh, don't name your child that. Well, Name it adult. So you yes. can say, fuck me good, adult. <laughs> Naming a baby adult is hilarious. <laughs> this is, this is li- my son adult. This is my this is our baby adult. <laughs> <laughs> baby adult learned to dry, learned to walk today. Baby adult, you know, he's got yeah. 10 fingers, 10 toes. Mm-hmm. Wait, let's move let's move on. To, where are you up to in Selling Sunset right now? Ooh. Cuz I am up to uh uh Chriselle talking about getting her upcoming surgery for uh ovarian cyst removal and yes. then she walks off camera crying. I am a little bit past that, but not by much. So I think we're at the same place. So far, it's a pretty good season. Yeah. So far, it's pretty good. For context, for listeners, I, my ex-girlfriend and I used to watch Selling Sunset together all the time. And so when we broke up, I like stopped watching it because I was like, this is sad. And I just watch it because I'm like that. Um, Yes. Lucas just watches it because he is always functioning like a lesbian after a breakup. Uh, it's so funny but now that like she and I are friends again and bridges have been mended and I've gotten some closure I'm like I want to watch my favorite shows again so I started watching Selling Sunset and I blew through season six yeah I mean I hadn't even watched like the introduction of Brie and Nicole oh yeah 
That was that was huge. That was huge. I think it's so funny that there was like full. I like Brie. I like Brie a lot. I like her. I think it's crazy. There was full drama about like her being like Nick Cannon's baby mama. Yeah. And I think it's it's really interesting to me about Selling Sunset that basically all it is is just like you know seven coworkers on camera airing out coworker shit, like. But what I remember talking about on the podcast once mm. is that there's other people who work in the Oppenheim group. Yes, who aren't on the show. Who aren't on camera. Also, that's the craziest thing is that is it is her name Nicole who's like now the the heel of yes. the She apparently is like one of the oldest like longest running yeah. agents at the Oppenheim group and only recently got brought onto the show. That's got to that's got to sting. Yeah, because she rearranged her face to be on the show, like Rochelle yeah. aired out. <laughs> but all of this to say, like, the things they say on camera, like Chelsea being like, oh, to Brie, like, oh, your family structure is wrong because Nick Cannon has multiple children with multiple women. Mm -hmm. Like, that's an HR violation in any other office. But what I'm imagining now is one of those uggos who's off camera and not on the show working at the Oppenheim group. Like, what if they said something to one of their coworkers like that and they got pulled into HR? They'd be like, do I have to do it on camera <laughs> to not get in trouble? That's a good point. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they just have to work like a real office. And then these people get to, like, fuck around and be on camera all day. Oh they get to God. go to Cabo. Yeah. They got to go to Cabo and drink. They were encouraged to drink together. It's a crazy, it's a crazy system. I also started wondering, I was like, because, like, Chriselle became a cast member upon her joining the Oppenheim group. Yes. As well. You know, I was wondering if there's, like, drama of, like, you know, like, sometimes, like, to, to get on, like, SNL, you either audition or sometimes it's writers who get, like, a little bit yeah. of, like, a, they sort of curve their way in. I mean, doing auditions and everything, but that's their, like, their yeah. get into it. So I'm wondering, like, are there people that, like, become cast are like, no, I actually want to transition to just being a writer here? <laughs> <laughs> just, being, just being a cast member on selling sunset but then you're like i think i just like the work <laughs> i think that was davina yeah she's just like well she doesn't work there anymore but there was a while where she was like there in season six and then suddenly she left yeah maya basically as well yeah i think maya moved Miami, maya right? did move yeah for, but yeah that would be funny if someone's like no i really just love selling real estate i don't like fighting with my coworkers and getting fillers but yeah i love selling houses that's a guy, that's a beautiful thing. That is, I that's mean, great. they look, apparently they say on the show it's like one of the the lowest rates of depression is that job being a real estate yeah, agent. Yeah, because you're so rich. Yeah, there's so much money involved. Yeah, I think Would about you? that a lot. That they're like th these, what they're dealing with is ultimately like they're the one percent. Like when they're talking about the mansion tax, Jason's like we're up against this mansion tax. The mansion tax is probably a very good thing. Oh, I'm I'm for it. <laughs> you know? It is hilarious, like getting because I never heard of that until this show, and <laughs> now I'm watching. I'm like, this is hilarious that I'm supposed to be rooting for you guys, but this is a wonderful thing that the state of California is doing. <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to be like, fuck this mansion tax. No one can get away with anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, this is affecting us. Yeah, the mansion tax. You can't say anything anymore. You can't even. You can't even own a giant house that's too big for you. Ugh, talk about it, soul sister. You can't even own a $50 million house without being dinged by the yeah. government. Without the libs. Yeah, the libs. The libs. <laughs> I feel like... Who do you think they voted for in the primaries? I'm guessing Hillary. I'm thinking all of them are big Hillary heads. I was going to say that, that I feel like... There's a certain or amount Buttigieg. of like political dissonance in that office where like their politics are all actually so opposed to what they do for work. Brett, I think, could be a Gary Johnson guy. Oh, I so see it. He looks like he would he looks like he would he would say, All right, besides what is Aleppo, he had great policies. I think we've become selling sunset pilled when you know that you can tell Brett and Jason apart. Yes. It's so scary how much I, I can, can easily tell them apart now, yeah. which I shouldn't. <laughs> Shouldn't. No one should. Brett also has the deeper voice. Yeah, he's a little bit raspier. He's a little bit sort of like this, whereas Jason's like, yeah, he's he's a he's a little more open. Okay, a little Jason like that. is a dyke. He's dated N Nicole, Mary, and Chriselle, and they're all in his office working for him, and they're all his friends. That man should not be allowed at the cubby hole. 
They have a sign of him on the wall. Do not let him in. It's true. <laughs> He's a dyke. <laughs> and now he wants his new girlfriend to be friends with all of... Come on, girly pop. We're all gay here. <laughs> okay, I do think it's funny... <laughs> Uh, when he hosts SNL, you have to you have to write for him. <laughs> you have to write his monologue. He, and just say, first off, I am a lesbian. I think I would love that. I also think it's funny that so many of the listeners just haven't seen this, and they're just like, "All right, let's skip ahead twenty minutes. Let's mm. skip a- go watch Selling Sunset." Okay, this do is yourself a- not a favor. This is a Selling Sunset podcast. Don't yeah. you understand? With occasional. We're Recaps still trying to get Christine Quinn on. We're still trying to get her on. Oh, I need her on so bad. Oh my God, she would be. Oh. Well, we, I want her sitting right here. We DM'd Adam Hicks to come we on. DM Adam Hicks. We'll get to that in a second. One more point on Selling Sunset. Yeah. So for those who don't know, uh. Jason Oppenheim uh, is dating this like much, Mari Lou. Mari Lou. Much younger. I think they broke up actually. Oh. Yeah. Like, no, her name is still Mari Lou. Well, her name. <laughs> No, no, she lost it in the breakup. Yeah, yeah, she lost it like a dog. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was gonna say they treat her like a dog. The girls, they like, they like go up to her. They're like, "It's you guys are in love, right? Yeah. Everything's okay. Good girl, good girl." And it's like she's a person. Yeah, but she's, she's twenty four or twenty five, and so they're like, "Nah, you're barely a person." But that's fun. We're up. all forty here. I, they're, yeah, they are all, she's like a human, but they treat her like she has no thoughts. They're like, it's okay that Jason's doing this. Come on. It's okay. She's like fully, she's at one point says something and Romaine just goes, yeah, I understood what you were saying. It, Romaine's my favorite character. He's the only one who's nice. He's so nice. Romaine, I think, I still think though that he gets fed every single line he says right before he says it. <laughs> yeah. Because I... Who always sort of talks as if he's about to make the kissy face like this. That's very good. It's, oh yeah, Mary, I, I, I love that for the office. Just, that's <laughs> how he says every single thing. It's never natural. The house debate when he and Mary were talking about buying a house. I just remember he had this one line where at some point he goes, absolutely not. And I think about that. Absolutely all the time. not. Yeah. yeah, but he, but he, like, kind of is more animated about it. Mm. He's like, g- g- try and do it. Absolutely not. Yes, yes, yes. There, <laughs> and he's staring. Oh what, do you think that uh, big news of this season is that Mary and Romaine are having a baby? I know. Yeah. Oh wait, but they. Does she have a miscarriage? I'm not going to spoil anything. I'm not going to spoil no! it. I'm not going to spoil it. Oh, you spoiled it. Oh, fuck. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, to be fair, it's on me because the season's already out. And... The season's been out for like four months. And also, <laughs> I think they've since all like moved on in their lives. Like, Oh, they have a miscarriage? Yeah. But I think oh. that she's still trying and, you know, she'll get there. That makes me so sad. Mm-hmm. She was getting so excited. I mean... Me, uh, it's I can't imagine a lot of these women on the show are dealing with like late in life fertility and mm. obviously that's something I think about sometimes because I want to have a kid eventually but yeah. my mom didn't have a kid until she was like 39 she yeah, and you me. turned out great I I turned out all right <laughs> I'm here <laughs> and I'm here at 4 p.m. unemployed <laughs> well part yeah. partially employed Oh yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? What you've been up oh, to? Oh yeah, I have a fun new job. I uh, I help this woman um, sell earrings. Cute. And she's she's an icon to me. Nice. I didn't know how much I needed to queen out with an older woman on the Upper East Side until I got this job. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's so lovely. I love I love to work. Mm. By work, I mean kind of just be there. <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> but yes, oh. Lucas and I. Recently got really into the celebrity. Celebrity is a stretch. Mm-hmm. There's a gentleman by the name of Adam Hicks. He yes. used to be on Disney Channel. Yes. Um, he was in uh, How to Eat Fried Worms. Yes. He was also in Lemonade Mouth. Beautiful movie. Beautiful and he, he did a lot of uh, writing of the rap in... Uh, oh my... What's the name of the song? De- I'm My memory is Determinate. shit. Determinate. Determinate. That's yeah. it. He... I thought... I was about to say deteriorate. <laughs> And I was like, that's not it. Gotta turn the world to your dance floor. Deteriorate. Mm. He's great. 
Yeah. But he uh, fell on some hard times. He fell on he, some hard times. He yeah. got in some crime. He, uh, you know, he he robbed old ladies. Yeah. He I, shot himself in the leg. <laughs> Which makes me laugh every time. The escalation of his crimes is insane. Because it starts with something bad. It's like he got in like a bad fight with his girlfriend that the cops were called. You're like, oh no, bad. Then it goes to he shot himself in the leg. You're like, yeah. what? <laughs> bad, but w- why? What I love happened? This guy. And then it's he robbed elderly women. And you're like, how? And oh, it gets why? even better. So, like, if you look at like old interviews from him on Disney Channel, he has a regular ass voice. Regular mm. as as regular as you would expect someone who looks like him to talk. He is You're a just white, like that's a, a guy. guy. That's a guy. He's a he's white a guy. A little white guy with red hair. Oh, so red. Oh yeah. He's he's a he's muy pale. Yeah. And every interview, like post prison, the most intense. Oh yeah, he went to prison. He went to prison. For a while, and now he has the most intense black scent you've ever heard. It's kind of it's kind of impressive. You know, okay, controversial. Let me know what you think as black man. But if you're in prison, are you like not Great gonna start. develop a black scent? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's like you got like Madonna <laughs> moving to the UK and ad- and adopting a shitty British accent. Or like, why did Martha Stewart do it? Wait, how long was Martha Stewart in prison? Was, That's a good question. It was like a year, and honestly, she was kind of in her own cell. She was kind of like, she kind of had like some prison privileges a little bit because she was Martha Stewart. Yeah. She has pull in there. But also, she was nice. They based a character on Orange is the New Black off of her. Oh, hold on. How long was Martha Stewart in prison? Um, let me Let me answer that. Too long. Okay. okay. She should have been Five free months. the whole time. That was it. Oh, okay. Not, That's nothing. Not long enough. That to would be impressive if she started, you know, be like, <laughs> be like huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, changed up in this bitch. Yeah. Martha Stewart's just like, all right, today we're going to make that stuffing, though. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, that. I, I, do you think you would come out of prison with a let's say you went in for like two years you're talking a little different absolutely think? yeah i'd i'd love it <laughs> i wouldn't love prison but i'd love the I, changing if, if someone was like you have a black set now i'd be like i was in jail <laughs> and then they'd have to deal with their own complex feelings around the carceral system oh yeah i like doing that um i don't i i don't know so do you think I think you'd be talking a little different if you were in prison? I think I probably would. I think I would be talking. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what was interesting is that on the show that I cannot say that I did recently, um, I will say I came out with not different like lingo, but body language changed. Yeah. How I greeted people. It was I, I was dapping people a lot uh, up a lot more than you I was before. the homies. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. I I mean that's not jail. <laughs> no, no, no. I and I never would say that. No. But it was but it was a very inten- intense little period where everyone is behaving a certain way and to and to progress you have to be you have to behave in kind. Yeah. That happens in environments. Yeah. I mean yeah. also your whole family's black. Yeah, but that's they're also the, british i guess yeah it's it's very different culture mm. black american culture is very very particular is there a is there like a speci- like are there specificities to black british culture um well the th- okay and first off this is this may be very limited in terms of my information but i to my understanding because like the American slave trade was like such a mm. massive operation that happened over such a long period of time in which millions of people lost their culture, their names, everything to do with their identity, that they all sort of like came together in what is now America to create their own identity, which is why being black in America is, is its own identity, yeah. almost its own, not necessarily ethnicity, but its own culture. Yes, yeah. that's the word I'm looking for. It became its own culture. Whereas... I would say most, if not all people in the UK, I, again, I could be wrong, but all probably 
I mean, obviously some like black Americans will move to the UK, but a lot of like people that move in from Africa or from uh, like uh, the Caribbean, like the wind rush. That was mm-hmm. a big thing like 70, 80 years ago where a lot of um, uh, people in the Caribbean, the West Indies, Jamaica, they moved to England to fill uh, service jobs, a lot of uh, nurses yeah. and stuff. And so they retained a lot of their culture from like Jamaica or Nigeria or wherever. So it's it's much more sort of connected to where from from where they immigrated from they mm. still have like i believe yeah. some sense of a very strong sense of identity where they would still call themselves like oh yeah i'm british but i am jamaican i'm nigerian uganda whatever and so that that's that's a big difference interesting i noticed that a little when i was in london with like everyone just that like the it was so international in a way that like here even isn't like everyone had their own just subculture and way of being and it was like there was no real thing that kept england there was no like british way of being other than the very obvious things but i could be wrong i don't know what are the obvious things just like tea and bad food yeah yeah, shitty like beans on toast and uh you know kind of a general demeanor of like oh we did it uh, london it (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, general we, demeanor of we, we did it fucked them up <laughs> fuck you talking about mate yeah. yeah yeah um something that i noticed when i was like around like 18 19 i started really noticing more noticeably mixed race people in england than i ever noticed in america mm. and a lot of uh, interracial couples we- saw that way more in the uk than i ever did here mm. <clears throat> and i think it's because like class is not as much a divider in this country it is but like in the uk way more Mm. way more and they still they still have a lot of like like poor white people yeah not to say we don't have here but like the divider is much more in about race in the u.s would you agree yeah it's a little bit of everything but i feel like yeah it's um the amount of material resources you have here can like impact where you go to school and i mean i guess that's everywhere but like it's uh there but there is but i think we can say there is a slight cultural difference in how they view the divisions of class and and how yeah. the, and how that's established and an example that i have noticed is i've noticed just maybe this is anecdotal but like i have noticed more uh uh interracial couples and mixed race uh kids and people i've noticed that way more in the uk than i ever have here you looking i'm just looking what for friends <laughs> you're like in the lobster i want to find some but it's 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 not like you have to have like each an ailment it's like you have to each be the same race oh god no have you ever seen the lobster no it's a I great haven't. movie i've heard that it's very good but no i haven't it's seen it it's a movie about um it's like if uh if you're a person who's like uh if i'm a person full stop if you're a person if am i if you're a person who's blind you need to also be dating someone who's blind oh it's like it's a weird it, it's it's um i don't really understand the world of it but okay. they but yorgos lanthimos mm-hmm. makes it a very powerful my boy yeah, makes it a very powerful Yorgos. movie about like you call him Yorg. Yorg, yeah, my boy Yorg. Hey, Yorg. Yorgi. Um, so it's it's like that, but you're you're looking for mm-hmm. <laughs> other people of the same race. Okay, yeah, the punchline is still way darker than it should be. <laughs> it's still just like, yeah, you're still just saying that though. Ah, uh, what's the timestamp? Ah, <laughs> uh, forty-four minutes. Uh, fine. We're fine. We're fine. Uh, <laughs> well, well, one time Divya came on and you did an Indian accent, <laughs> which was unintentional, <laughs> which was not, which was not the accent I was trying to do at all. It was my favorite day. <laughs> it was so much fun. You've heard me do that accent before. Yeah. But when she called it an Indian accent, I was like, you're an Indian woman. I can't argue with you. Yeah, that's fair. You yeah. got you got to side with her. I respect that completely. Well, that's I do. I always side with women. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's interesting. I feel like uh, 
Yeah, he, here just like... That's gro- crazy because you broke up with one. An Indian woman? No, just a woman. <laughs> thought you were on the side of women. Yeah, I'm on the side of women so much that I was like, I actually need to date more of them. Mm, okay, okay, okay. I'm very the, well done. I'm just kind of li- you know. I'm a, Damn, that was slick. I'm a dog. I'm a dog mm-hmm. who, You're who a dog? falls in love for years and years at a time and spends years in monogamous relationships. I'm a dog. I'm a arf arf. Yeah. I'm a dog who wants to get married so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dog who wants to make pasta for my wife so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Just want to make pasta. Yeah. And give them a little hug from behind as they make the sauce. Oh, I want that so bad. I know you do. Oh, I'm just a, you know, it's a dog eat dog world. And every night I want to be in bed with my wife going, woof, woof, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> give them a little forehead kiss and then turn them around and spoon them. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, talk, wait, talk about like, uh, if you have, have you described your type? before yeah just like uh, I've, I've heard you describe your type just to me but i don't know if you said it on the podcast before i feel Help like the people there's out. a certain amount of like uh i, I tend to fall for like soft-spoken people but they're like yeah. really smart like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh readers mm-hmm. fall for a lot of readers uh passionate individuals like uh, and very like into their own style like mm. not necessarily like any kind of look but just like people who care about how they present like the guy at, at, at it's a small world after all he really cared he hey say what you will but he did something he stuck with it he he knows himself yeah he knows his vibe yeah. and he knows his his his, his style he's he, i i would go I, he's my type Think he's single. Ooh. Imagine, is he still hogtied? <laughs> imagine sticking with him throughout all of this. Wait, you're just the wife. Yeah. And you're like, just like, nah, this is my man. This is who I yeah. This I is stand this is my by guy. the Disneyland streaker. <laughs> Can I tell you I, my dad had this friend who he he got a mail order wife from the Philippines and he was strategic about it. He said, I want to get someone from a Catholic country so they can't divorce me because he knew that he was an insufferable person. Do they put them in the mail? Yeah, they put they put a little stamp. I just don't understand why they call like, it mail order. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're barcode. Yeah. Do they put the, I just don't understand the terminology. They should call it something nicer. Like. Um, involuntary wife who could learn to love you. <laughs> I don't know if she ever really learned, but I know that she stuck around. Really? And I know that he may still be alive. I have no idea if if he is. Um, but he, uh, but <laughs> I, I, I wonder like, what if he did something like this and she was just like, ah, oh, Christ, I guess we got, I got to stick with him. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm a she Philippine, holds a press I'm a, conference. I'm a Filipino woman and Catholic. I gotta, I gotta stick with them. This is my thing. <laughs> but it's anti-Catholic to streak. Yeah, I know. But it's worse to divorce. Yeah. 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 There's a hierarchy. She here. holds a press conference. It's like today, my husband uh, streaked through Disneyland, and uh, I just want to say this has made us stronger than ever, and we're continuing. We're actually having a baby next fall. Yeah, he will be born naked in in solidarity, and we will give birth to him in Disneyland. The ultimate Disney streaker doesn't can't even have clothes on. Oh my god, you've heard of like those those water births? What if they were like, I'm sorry, we were here. <laughs> you mean it? It's a small world. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted. To- <laughs> I wanted to do a water birth at the It's a Small World exhibit. <laughs> Doing a water birth at Splash Mountain. (laughs) Baby comes out when the fucking ride goes down. Or the log flume. Ooh, water birth at the log flume. Yeah, get some velocity going. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Where's your, where's the, uh, what do you think is the best amusement park ride to do a non-water birth? Just, uh, just regular birth? Yeah. No water, just given birth. That's a great question. 
Uh, so you're just giving birth at an amusement park. Yes. Okay. But you got to do it somewhere. Oh, okay. You know that um you know that uh it's like it's like this bar and you hit lots of seats on it and then it's on this thing that like it's it's sort of like you're at one end of the rotisserie and then it spins you this way, spins you up and then you wee and all around like that. But you're on like this thing and it goes wee 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 like that. And you're your not talking about the pirate ship, are you? Yeah, it's like that. It's a lot like the pirate ship. Yeah. You'd give birth on the pirate ship. Yeah. So you That's go. That's a great pew! answer. Yeah. It's like an angry bird. Just <laughs> <laughs> not an angry bird. <laughs> the baby shoots out. Gotta learn somehow. Life's not fair. Yeah. Whoa! And Matt. Okay. A baby has never gotten more air. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you time it with like a real good push. The baby's not freaking out. <laughs> the the idea that it's like a cannon. <laughs> that you just open your legs and you're like. <laughs> okay, it is a little bit like that. E- sure. Right. I forgot. That's how birth goes. Yeah. Lucas thinks that our vaginas are slingshots. Yeah. But then you but then you got like the umbilical cord and then you're just a really off balance nunchuck. <laughs> And my thing I said was bad. <laughs> if we're leaving my thing in there about doing eugenics like it's the lobster, we're leaving your thing in there too. No, mine is just like a fun science experiment. Yours is crazy. <laughs> Describing eugenics. What is eugenics besides a fun science experiment? Oh my God. A fun science experiment persevering. God damn. And that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> a water birth and it's a small oh, world. I like that. Yeah. yeah, I do it. But I think my mm-hmm. t- my type, you know. Yeah. So anyway, Adam Hicks. Adam um, Oh right. My yeah, type is about, Adam Hicks. Well yeah, the reason why uh this came up is that my girlfriend and I, we've been watching like some DCOMs. Is your girlfriend I, your personality type? Your usual like do you feel ooh. like you have a personality type? That that I go for? Yeah. I think I've been bad in the past at actually really acknowledging that I do. And I think in the past I've ignored that I do have a personality mm. type. Yeah. That's what I think. I think you do. I think you really need like someone funny. I and do. Your girlfriend is so funny. She is. Fu- she's silly. Yes. That was that was something that I noticed on our first date was that she was silly as fuck. Yes. That and I and I immediately liked that. Yeah. Yeah. She's great. Just like because she was over here for uh, for Thanksgiving and like I have an Apple TV with like the voice command and like you guys got into a thing where like, oh, we need to watch like a Gossip Girl clip. It was the Thanksgiving. Which Jason King and Momo were like, God fucking damn it. These white women. (laughs) Yeah, it was the Gossip Girl episode that it it should be in the textbooks everywhere. The Thanksgiving episode where "Mm, what you say, please, as they all air out their drama at the table. It was amazing. No, but but Mary said, baby, speak the words. (laughs) And that made me laugh so much. Can I tell you something really funny that happened the other day? So she and I are fighting. We're we're fighting right now over who would win in a fight. Oh. I think that I could hold my own pretty well. Absolutely not. And that's what everyone says. Yeah. Everyone is saying, no, she would, she would win. Absolutely not. And, but can I tell you, like we were on the, we were on the train the other day and, uh, we were talking about like the logistics and this is what convinced me a little bit was that people said, no, it's not, it's not just the difference in your body types and how flimsy you are, Lucas, but it's because I'm an only child and she grew up with siblings and siblings Siblings just naturally give you. You get fighting skills over time, just yeah. out of survival. My sister used to jump on me, like I. But this was voluntary. This was a weird thing. I would like lay on the bed, like on my stomach, and mm-hmm. I'd be like, "Just jump on me as hard as you can," mm-hmm. and she'd do it, so I could take a punch. You know, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. But, so, so well, Mary is the one who got you into Adam Hicks. Yes. I don't wait. Can we say your name? Uh. Yeah. Fifty-four. It's. I. I just want to protect her privacy. Yeah. You know. Girlfriend. Uh, girlfriend, yes. Uh, redacted name, redacted. Anyway, so uh, Janine Garofalo. <laughs> My girlfriend, Janine Garofalo. Yes. Janine. Yeah, so Janine, uh, we were we were on the train, and I was I was doing like, I was doing one of these. I was doing, you know, one of these. I was like, hey, look at this. You think that you can take this? And she said, look at your handsome little arms. That Janine. <laughs> she said, babe, look at your handsome little arms. She's so funny. And I was like, this is hilarious. Yeah, she got your ass. She got my 
is such a it's just a perfect way to put it. Oh, you God. like a silly woman. I I absolutely do like a silly woman. That is that is fact. Yeah. I love a silly woman. I love that personality type. Yeah. I need that. Yeah. I need that. So a silly woman, she she got Lucas into Adam Hicks, and then yes. we started going down a, a rabbit hole, if you she will. She hickses me every now and again. Yeah. She, where she'll like uh, basically like Rick Roll me, but with this one song that he wrote uh, called "The Chosen One." <laughs> I'm the chosen one. See, I he been... stands so awkwardly in the music video. You've never seen someone just like. I've been listening. I've been getting hickst. Get hickst. Yeah. I am I am so hicks. I've been listening to his song Famous. Yeah. Life ain't never been good to me. All I ever wanted was change. <laughs> I'd be good. All I ever for, wanted was change. change. <laughs> he talks like um he talks like a white version of Assad. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking also like the way he stands as well. It's like it's very Assad. Yeah, he's just like deeply He's this grown man who's like deeply uncomfortable in his own body and he's just rapping in front of the mic. He's like, baby mama's tripping. <laughs> but he's a white guy with red hair, so it's so bizarre. It's so good. I have gotten obsessed with Adam Hicks. I am Hicks. Yeah. I would love to see him and Assad switch bodies for a day. See what Adam does. Who in would his... you switch bodies with for a day? Ooh. Well, it would be because I would want to hear what someone's comedic voice sounds like in my body and voice. I would be curious to see, like, what that juxtaposition would be like. Interesting. You know? So the voice stays the same, but you No, just... no, no, not the voice, but, like, the, the intonation, the person, the personality, the sort of their soul. Just, like, hearing, like, Assad through your voice, I think, would be hilarious. <laughs> like, if he just occupied your body, like, a Freaky Friday scenario. Freaky <laughs> Friday, like, it's just souls and memories switched, but say, but now you have, like, another person's, like, body and voice. I would love that. I would love to see, like, Assad as you. Be that I would, would love hilarious. to see you as Chris Shell on Selling Sunset. Oh, that would be great. I want to see you sell a house. Oh, I would love that. I would love to. I would. I would love to switch bodies with Chris Shell and just and then just. I would switch and bodies then just with, be with G Flip and be like, "Hey, I, this is crazy, but like, my name is actually Lucas. We're just switch right now." Well, Luke, G Flip is so chill. They'd be like, "All right, that's great, yeah. cheeky. Yeah. All right, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah cheeky. Yeah, you're Drumming. cheeky. You're cheeky." That's my favorite thing they say to Cashel. You're so cheeky. Mm -hmm. You want to get a cheeky, cheeky margarita? Yeah. You want to take some cheeky time in Australia? Yeah. Oh, that's mm -hmm. cheeky. Ooh. I also love a cheeky Nando's, even though that's not Australian, it's British. But I love a cheeky Nando's. I hate the word cheeky. Just say it. I like cheeky. <sighs> cheeky, Just cheeky. Say, cheeky to me. You ever so hear of the cheeky girls? We are the cheeky girls. We are the cheeky girls. Touch my bum. Touch my bum. To me, cheeky is the same as make love. Oh, yeah. It's on that same level. Of like, hey, Gabby, uh, would you like to make love? See, that was actually better. Yeah. But, <laughs> it, but if you said, would you like to make cheeky love? Hey, do you want to make some cheeky love? <laughs> Wait, look at me. Look at me in the eyes. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Oh my god. <laughs> no, look me. Look me in the eyes. <laughs> I have a tear coming down my face. Would you? I can't do this. <laughs> this is so... Wait, no, give me a headache. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't do it, you coward. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> I can't fucking do Okay. I can't do Okay. <laughs> Make your face normal. No! I'm too shocked. I'm shocked and I'm upset uh, and furious. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm going to make my face normal. <laughs> Y'all, yeah, Lucas? Okay, okay. What do you want? I'd love to make some cheeky love with you. Um... Well, it's been a great three years. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a great three years on the podcast. Janine Garofalo wouldn't be happy about that. Nah, she's into it. Don't worry. <laughs> she wants she's into it. Oh, she's a freak. Janine is a freak, let me tell you. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> because then you have to toe the line between how funny it is to say Janine Garofalo is your girlfriend and saying things about your real girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> nah, she's cool. Yeah. Nah, she's cool. Janine's cool as fuck. <laughs> Love me some. Janine Garofalo, <laughs> yeah. the real actress, not the code name. Yeah. She's a real one. Oh, yeah. She kind of rocks. She's great. I Did you ever see The Mystery Men? No. Oh, that's a great movie that actual Janine Garofalo is in. Amazing movie. It's about people that are like, I just, I just really want to be a superhero. Oh. It's just regular people that are like, there's a guy who's like, I'm, uh, I'm the, the blue Raja. It's Hank Azaria. And he puts on like a turban and does a British accent. And he just like throws silverware at people. <laughs> and then there's William H. Macy, who is, I think he's the shoveler. This he's, is like a fever dream. It's so good. There's a guy called the human spleen. Who's like the same, uh, uh, actor as Pee Wee Herman. Uh, what's that guy's name? Pee Wee Herman? No, not, no, like the actual guy though. Oh, I'm so dumb. I literally thought Pee Wee Herman's name was Pee Wee Herman. You, you did not. I know I did think that. No, that's really bad. I did think it was Pee Wee Herman. I did not think he had another name. All right, Paul Rubens. Yeah, he, um, oh, that's a stupid name. He plays a guy called Pee-wee the Herman. Human Spleen, the Human Spleen, that and rocks. he just, he, he has like atomic farts. It's, it's incredible. That's the movie? Yeah. <sighs> It's great. It's such a good movie. But there are some real superheroes in it, like people that are actually incredible. And Janine Garofalo plays uh, the bowler, and she has her dad's skull. And her dad was a real superhero. Her dad's skull is in a bowling ball, and she, like, talks to the bowling ball because it still has his soul in it. That's like the movie with Kevin Spacey, Nine Lives, where he um, he's like... Traumatizes nine children. <laughs> and then comes out as gay. <laughs> He's no, he plays like um like this deadbeat dad, and then he dies, but he gets reincarnated as a cat, as the oh. family cat. Interesting. And so okay. he has to show his daughter, look, I'm me, your dad, but as a cat. So he has to do all these like weird things, like That's be a incredible. cat on the pull up bar, and like meow all the time. How would you not just like get a bunch of detritus and just write? I some some sort of message like uh, so like Cats writing as have opposable thumb. Yeah, but you can nudge stuff in a in, a, in an arrangement. I don't think ca- most cats are smart. This is what's making me think. Actually, maybe a lot of cats are just humans trapped in cat bodies trying to t- tell us that this is happening. No. Why else would they act like that? No, I've seen some cats that are real dumb. <laughs> like too dumb to be a person. I used to live with a dumb cat, Washington. He Case in am- point. He was amazing. He would bang his big head on everything. <laughs> and he was so fat. That there's this video I have that I love of him where he kind of like it when cats are obese. Oh, I, I kind of like it. He was uh he's he's meowing because this fly is mm-hmm. there. And the fly is not that far away from him. Like he could catch it. Uh-huh. But uh he's he's meowing sadly that the fly is out of reach. And then the fly starts walking, fl- not walking away, <laughs> flying away. And Washington, who had previously been like, Meow, he the fly walks away and goes, Meow. <laughs> and it killed me <sighs> because he just refused to move his fat ass like he thought the fly would fly into his mouth. Oh, that's so sweet. He's a good boy. Can I tell you, I was a uh, cat sitting for Hayden Arrington and that cat is the sweetest creature on the planet oh we had so many great cuddle sessions you guys had good memories oh my god she 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 made me watch attack on titan again she made me start watching the anime again i don't know why that cat loves anime just loves anime and, and made us watch it and so i was like all right we're gonna we're gonna watch it here we are but yeah we had an amazing time some cats like certain shows like roscoe likes all the british shows really he likes bake off and he loved downton abbey nice i think what it is is cats like it when you're relaxed so oh, whatever yeah. show relaxes you the most they want to be around you oh for yeah it. also the cat jumped up on me whenever i was in bed and it would sit on my chest it was real sweet oh my god i wish i wasn't like allergic it's like the biggest curse of my life i'm so sorry I'm dating women when i'm yeah. allergic to cats the girl i'm kind of seeing now you're uh, basically you basically are a misogynist by being allergic to cats that's I'm a misogynist for a lot of reasons, but that's the primary one. Mm. Uh, secondary reason is being le- vaguely allergic to dogs. So I hate <sighs> men and women. Non-binary people, I love you. Hmm. <laughs> What's the non-binary pet? 
Um, fish. <laughs> fish. Yeah. I have a whole new bit about fish, actually. Yeah. Um, you know how men are always telling women to smile more. Mm-hmm. Women don't need to smile more. You know who needs to smile more? Fish. <laughs> fish don't look happy. Fish look like this all the time. <laughs> what is so bad? You're in a bath all the time. You don't pay rent. Can I tell you? I'm trying to. <laughs> That's good. That's a really good bit. I also, when we were hanging out on Friday, there was a, 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 a riff that I had that I wrote down where I was like, oh, I need to try this as a bit. We were talking about your grandmother and how she used to like hook up left, right and center. And now that she has dementia, she can't do it as much. And I was like, what if what if she like persevered and kept trying, but like lost her memory midway through like having sex? Just being like, well, I'm probably wondering how I got in the situation. <laughs> yeah, that killed me. <laughs> it's uh, just the idea of going I'm probably, I'm probably wondering. wondering how I got in this situation episode title I think I'm probably wondering how I got here yeah yeah it's a little long but I like it I, it's good we've we've had longer long and strong uh, if we... I had a nickel uh <laughs> let's let's get into some listener submissions let's do it hell yeah okay I've got yes I have one I have this pulled up okay Oh yeah, what are your thoughts on the new Selling Sunset season? We've covered that. All right, here we go. This is a this is a proper one. Uh, hey Meerkats, I'm a freshman in high school and I'm considering ending a friendship. Mm. Let's call her Allie. Me, Allie, and another girl, Jane, were all friends in seventh and eighth grade. Me and Allie talked a lot and got pretty close. During the summer between 8th and ninth grade, Jane wasn't as close with Allie anymore, so she decided to not be friends anymore. Allie immediately texted me and was pretty upset. I comforted her as best as I could, but there wasn't much I could do. Allie kept going on and on about how Jane hated her, Jane didn't hate her, and wouldn't listen to me at all. I am still friends with both Jane and Allie, but I'm considering not being friends with Allie anymore. We don't text much, and even if we do, it's her telling me things that happen and me just replying. Looking back on our old conversations, it was just me being sort of like a therapist to her. I don't feel that close to Allie, but I know that if I say that I don't want to be friends anymore, she'll think I hate her when I don't. I was considering telling her all this earlier, but her cat had passed away. I <laughs> That's a twist I wasn't expecting. I honestly don't know what to do. P.S. The guest's eyelashes look amazing. Guest? guest? Previous guests of the pod? Guest? Your eyelashes look great. Guest? This is Very where, fetching. It's where we say. find out that we've had a guest all along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jason Derulo. <laughs> JR. Hi, it's me, Jason Derulo. I just fell down the steps of your house. That's a... <laughs> Hi, it's me, Jason Derulo. I've fallen and I can't back, get, get, get up. Hi, it's me, Jason Derulo, Mickey Mouse. Hi, it's me, Jason Derulo. Do you have a minute to talk about Jesus Christ? Hi, it's me, Jason Derulo, and you can bring a fish to water, but you can't make it drink. Hey, it's me, Jason Derulo. I'm on the app Brenda. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> don't mention Brenda. I'm so sorry. If I even, I don't even know. What I love Brenda, that that's the name of the app. I don't even know what Did Brenda's it, like. Obviously, I've never been on. I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, that's my wife. We met on Brenda. I can't do that. That's I my mean, mother. I mean, if me and my girlfriend get married, I'm going to have to tell people. I'm like, yeah, we met on Hinge. If we have it, it, like if we have kids, I'll be like, yeah, I'll you, people, you exist because of Hinge. I'll tell people I met on Hinge any day. I'm not telling people we met because of an app that bears my mother's name. Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. Did they think like, oh, let's come up with a gay name? Yeah, but Brenda's not that gay of a name. I mean, what's a gayer name? Um, okay, gay names for women. Angela Merkel. Angela, <laughs> Angela is pretty gay. Um, I feel like. <laughs> why did the first thing I thought of was Todd? <laughs> it's like a stereotypically gay guy name. Yeah. Yeah, but if a girl was named Todd, I'd also be like, it's kind of gay. D yeah. Or no, maybe I'd be like, that's straight in that like bohemian Gen Z way where they're queer baiting. <laughs> it's straight in that it's a lie. <laughs> it's straight. Yeah. Um, okay. I feel like I'm. Gayer names. Yeah. Melissa's kind of gay. Yeah, it can be. It can it's, be. Yeah. It's a strong name. It's a very strong name, bold. When I was watching Contact, the movie that the amazing Katya loves and mentions all the time mm -hmm. on her podcast, um, I was really into Jodie Foster. Oh, yeah? Because she seemed, I mean, 
it was just so unbelievable that she'd be into Matthew McConaughey. Like she seems so gay in every in that movie. Like mm-hmm. she's this just like really kind of like like a mask of center science girl. Mm. And I was so into it. Mask of center is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> She's a mask of center, and then she took off her mask, and she was in the center. Yeah. Okay, wait, did I did I tell you what I did as a toddler in the movie theater during a Jodie Foster movie? Do I want to know? No, you do. It's actually very. It's it's cute. Um, I'm in a movie theater with either my mom or both my parents, and it's some Jodie Foster movie. So like Silence late, of the Lambs, late '90s. But it, it, there was there was a romance element of the movie, and just as, as Jodie Foster is about to start kissing this other actor. Um, my mom says that she just heard a little voice next to her to start going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, <laughs> H, just sort of like coaxing myself out of being uncomfortable with the alphabet. What? Yeah, I did that as a toddler. At least, at least you, at least you knew the alphabet. Hey, uh, count your wins where you can. Yeah, because fuck, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah, I was just like so uncomfortable. I was just like, oh, okay, so five things I can see, four things I can like. You know. In your defense, it would have been weirder if you'd been watching. You'd been like, I'm rock hard. Can't do that. That would be hilarious if I. Just- <laughs> the letters are just like no slower <laughs> <laughs> and i just heard a little voice say i'm coming More tongue <laughs> a little voice going i'm done <laughs> we didn't help this listener at all <laughs> um yeah okay okay our okay. advice is if you four things you can hear <laughs> yeah five things you can see i mean it sounds like your experience of this friend like you it sounds like you have a good grasp of how you're getting affected in this relationship and how like yeah you're not because ultimately a friendship should make you feel good as well it should be mutual yes it shouldn't it should not be just where one person has issues and care is going that way it should be a two-way street so yeah if i don't think that uh this individual said that they've talked about these issues yet uh, i was considering yeah i was considering telling her all this earlier but her cat had just passed away um so yeah maybe maybe give her a little bit of time give Allie a little bit of time to get over the cat's death maybe maybe a month that reminds me of uh when i was uh, shooting something for grad school at one point um we were in my friend's house and then one of my friend's roommates got home and uh started just very tearfully talking about their day and they were like uh and our cat he has covid and the sound guy like i looked at his face and he like almost laughed and he told me later he was like yeah i for sure thought it was a bit <laughs> the cat having covid but it was real and the cat died oh, at least so, you know uh, what the c in covid stands for cat cat Get the idea that COVID is like an acrostic poem. Yeah. <laughs> Cats, Cats over very, very idealistic dangers. <laughs> dangers. Yeah. Cats over very idealistic dangers. 19. Nine. <laughs> don't forget the 19. I don't. Uh, COVID's 1 through 18. Really feeling a little neglected right now. Yeah. 18, yeah. huh? I think that you and your friend, yeah. I think that there's a lot uh, that you're that you're doing right now in your head to like unpack whether this is the right friendship for you. I feel like you're on the right track. I do think. I think you also just know how you feel, really. Yeah. You know. Sometimes this just also happens in friend groups. You you kind of like become friends with two people because, and it turns out you just ultimately like hanging out with the one friend, and the other friend was always there. And so when it comes to having like an individual friendship with the other person, it's just not really going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all right. Yeah. And this and Allie may grow and be and later on be like, hey, I kind of was, you know, a little bit selfish or one sided. I want to let you know I'm sorry. That may happen in the future. Anything can happen. I mean, I was deeply depressed in middle school and high school. And I had a couple of friends drop me and I was very upset at the time. But years later, I was actually like, I'm glad they did that. Because if there weren't such consequences for me putting my shit onto everyone, then maybe I would never have known not to yeah. do that. It 
is not just a service to yourself, but a service to anyone this affects. Yes. Is you exerting proper boundaries is good for everyone. Yes, including the NATO alliance. Yes, you got to yes. exert boundaries with them. Yeah. You, because if they're on the phone with you being like, oh, my God, my boyfriend's such a cheating, lying ass. I'll be like, NATO, I'm I'm sorry, but I can't deal with this. NATO, it's you're always calling me. You got to go home. <laughs> Wherever that is for you. You got to go home. You can't just my mom likes you, but doesn't like you that much. Yeah. NATO, listen. And to be honest, I don't like you. Yeah. Don't you have other people to align with, NATO? Yeah. <laughs> you have a whole... That's your whole thing. Yeah. Why you gotta be on my phone being like... Don't just be North Atlantic. Try South. Ah, uh, that's true. You can always try South. Yeah. Yeah. South... Uh, Anal? I had, a, I had a rift. Yep. I think that was the rift. There it is. There it we is. We made it. We made it. Yeah. Should we do... Should we do one round of our Patreon game? Let's just to do tease a people? round of our Patreon. But first, let's do a little... A little... Uh, some plugs as we end the proper episode. Plugs. Okay. Well, I was thinking we could do like one round of the actual game for everyone. And then yes. we go into it on Patreon. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. That's great. That's but, great. But you can plug Where, first. I'll get the game. Oh, yes. Perfect. All right. So plugs. Uh, well... This is going to come out in some time, but I am doing the Vermont Comedy Fest this week, which I'm very excited for. Uh, however, also, I'm going to be doing uh, an opening set, a warm-up set. Oh, hello. Why is that so blurry? Oh, hello. There we are. Okay. Okay, yeah, we are back. Okay, uh, camera's a little blurry for a sec. But I'm doing an opening set for uh, Ella Yerman's new show, Late Stage Live. I'm going to be doing some warm-up stand-up for her and the recording of her show, which I'm excited for. And I'm also going to be doing a show for Cracked with Britt Miggs oh, on uh, the 14th. Yes, the 14th, I believe. I could be wrong. I will, I will post about it online and uh, have it on my website where tickets will be available. That's very fun. Oh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, this will come out in a little bit. I'm doing a girls. show with... Dave Sheehan in Connecticut in January. I'm opening for that show. And then, yeah, doing a couple other road gigs. Main thing is in December. I'll be in South Africa for two weeks seeing my granny <laughs> who wonders how she got in this situation. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, she's, uh, I'm excited for that. I'm excited to spend some time with the family. There, there will be other comedy things, other shows. But what we have for you right now, mm -hmm. and if you subscribe to our Patreon, which you should... Because it's awesome. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have for you, we're going to play a game. For the girls. For the girls that oh, I got goody. at a 99 cent store once. Explain it. Let's get, um, let's get into it. It is perfect for bachelorette parties, girls night in, girls night out, birthday parties, sororities, pre-games, reunions, and more. And I have no idea how it works. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I am excited. Uh, Keep the, oh. Dump the, the this is the copy. Dump the dudes for a night and gather up the girls for a wild ride. Players compete to collect the most cards. One, roll the die. Two, whichever side of the die lands face up, take the top card from that deck. Do whatever the. Two.